Let's pray. Father, I thank Thee for this day. We thank Thee for the Word of God. Allow it to direct us in the way we should go each day. Allow us to understand it better today than we have before. Allow it to be part of us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so in John chapter 18, so Mrs. Grummer, go ahead and read, um, <coughs> read, read a, let me see, go read a verse. Uh, Pastor Dan? Yes, Jacob. I hate to say this again, but I, I, I didn't get my little sheet early enough, uh, and I didn't notice the time slip by, but it's coming. I will read it. Okay, you read it, and then she'll, get, she'll pick up, uh, she can read the next round, okay? Go ahead, you read it. Judas then, having received the band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come, up, should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. So then, as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. All right, so the interesting uh, account here, what's happening here in chapter 18, we have uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, who's there. Um, we see him in the garden here. Uh, initially here in the beginning, uh, after after the high priest, the prayer, he crosses the brook Kidron. Brook Kidron, uh, brook of course, a little bit of flowing, a bit of water. He crosses the brook, the brook Kidron, and his, some, of the, some of the disciples are coming with him. Uh, and this is when, at the point when they enter the garden. They enter the garden, um, and uh, and uh, Jacob, um, who knew the place uh, where Lord Jesus Christ often went? Who was familiar with this garden? Judas, Judas Iscariot, he was, he, was, he was familiar with this garden. And he was the one, the scripture says, which betrayed him. And so, is the Lord Jesus Christ would often come to the same place. <coughs> would often come to this garden. He would come. He would come to, the, to come to the garden. And when we think of what the chief priest did for Judas, and did to the Lord Jesus Christ, they supplied Judas, the scripture says in verse 3, with a band of men uh, and officers. And so they came with lanterns. Uh, lanterns and torches. Okay, thank you, sorry. They, they, uh, they, they, they came with uh, lanterns and torches. Is that better, you think? No, for Hassan? They came with, shall we want? will be equal in volume and so forth. And so, and so we have uh, Judas was being, being supplied with a, with a, with a, a, a band of men, uh, and they come with still, uh, but they're coming with uh, they're coming with torches, and they're, they're coming with lanterns, um, and so they're they're they're, kind of, they're coming and they're they're willing to. Uh, the objective is to take uh, the Lord Jesus Christ prisoner. That, that's the objective. You know, remember that Judas, Judas, Judas is aware of all this. Judas, Judas is, a, is, is, a, is aware of 
of um, the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is, is there. He, he is aware of this fact. Uh, that he's there. It's, it's, it's a matter of what the Lord Jesus Christ would always quite often do with his, um, with his uh, disciples. Now, we have don't, a, don't get bit over there. <laughs> there's my two. Okay, there are some rowdy okay. students That's there. Evidently, everything. Good. So we're we're um, let's, uh, so what, what's what's occurring here is we have. Um, The chief priests and the Pharisees, that's that's who's who, who, who that's who uh, supplied Judas with the band of men. Yeah. Now uh, now Steve, uh, who said in verse this is coming from verse four, who said whom whom seek ye? Jesus. And the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one he is the one that said that. So he had you picture this this band this band of men who are coming. And they're coming to him and he's he's when he says, Whom seek ye? Now remember, it's dark outside. It's dark outside. They, they have uh, lanterns. They have uh, they have swords, and uh, they're coming. And Lord Jesus Christ is whom seek ye? And we notice here in verse five the res the response the response of, the, of this band of this group of soldiers that's coming it says they answered. Him, Jesus of Nazareth. And notice what Jesus says here. Jesus says, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And notice, it's very important to notice what Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ said here in verse 5. He says, I am he. Now, this, if you remember from the book of Exodus, with Moses at the burning bush, this is, this is the name of God, I am. I am. And so when we have the response, Amal, what was the response in verse 6? What happened to those surrounding the Lord Jesus Christ? Verse, the, the ones, when he said, I am he, the people, the soldiers, and I suppose Judas, I don't know, they fell, went backwards and fell to the ground. They well, fell backwards, they fell to the ground. He's like, they, uh, they understood, they, 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 they're doing something that, that's contrary, and but yet they're understanding the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, I am he. Which he, he was. He was the one that could say that. He is the same as God. He is God in flesh. He is the eternal Son of God. He is the second person of the Godhead. And so they, the response was they thought backwards. Like they, out of shock? Or? Well, yeah, out of, out, of, out, of, out of shock, I suppose, or even... Even even uh, perhaps the way he said it, because he, he, he was he was essentially saying, which was which he could say this, that he was God. That that's a title for God. I am. And so they 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 fell they fell backwards. Uh, perhaps a combination of both things, with the with the authority of his voice and the way in which he said it. They fell backwards. Jacob, you have a thought about this? Yes. The I am was sufficient. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the power of living God itself. It's a. Uh, it's ego, ego, a me, which is which is which is emphatic. Which is well, that's that's uh, what the the, line, the Greek word behind these English words the uh, the Greek word behind these English words here <coughs> would be. But yes, it, it is supplied here, Jacob. But he is supplied. So it says, I am. I am. Go ahead. Do your thought. Well, he, he was used to saying, I am, like, I am the way, I am the truth, I yes, am the vine. that's right. I am the light or whatever those, all those I am's were. The I am statements, that's correct. Mm -hmm. so that's it, right. So it says, I am. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse in verse 7, he asks us the second time, the same question, a second time, he asks it again. He says, whom seek ye? And they responded the second time, Jesus uh, of Nazareth, and um, um, this is a question from uh, from verse eight. Uh, who said, "If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way"? From verse eight, who said that? I guess that's uh, 
first part of the sentence. This term. Oh, term. Mom, it's, uh, this is the question is for you for verse 8. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Who said, if therefore ye seek me, let those go their way? Jesus. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the one. He is the one that's, that said that. He said that. Uh, so he wanted the people, the disciples that were with him, he wanted them to be released, not be arrested, not being taken, not being taken, not be held captive, but um, be able to be let go. To be able to be let go. Uh, Mrs. Grammer, you, you, are you on board yet? Oh, wait, wait. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Okay. And, uh, hey. what's that? I wonder, uh, uh, was Judas not considered one of his disciples, his apostles? He was one of the chosen ones. He, I mean, but he said, I've lost none, but he lost Judas. Well, we're working, we're working, we'll get to that. He, he says, that was in the previous previous chapter. Okay. Was it not? In I'm the, reading the ninth verse. Or so. in the ninth verse? Of the 18th. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we're going to... Uh, it's okay. Can, can you let me read verse 10, please? I couldn't figure that one out when I was studying oh. Mrs. Grammer, you still you, 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 Joe, right? You know what? I just discovered, well, chapter 17, verse 9. Like the verse 9 we're covering now, but verse 18. Mm -hmm. So I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Okay. So that kind of, not the same exact thing as verse 9, chapter 18. Right. But Talking about how he prays for them. Yes. Since they're already his. That's right. The ones that's, that are his. Yeah, that's correct. He, he does. He didn't hear us pray for them. So that one, what was the same was fulfilled? Is that the answer? <clears throat> well, she's referring to a uh, previous chapter, <clears throat> verse 9, in Jesus' uh, holy prayer uh, to God. He's thanking God. Uh, for all the, uh, the the people that were given to Jesus, uh, and here he's saying the same thing, but he's also saying that he had lost none that the Lord had but, given him. In the twelfth verse, it says, "But the son of perdition." Okay, so that that, that would be the only the only one the only one that would be would be, would be lost. <clears throat> so what what was the answer for eleven nine? I'll confuse a little bit. Okay. What, what saying was fulfilled? Yeah, look, look at 17:12. Look, look at chapter 17 and verse 12. Uh, while I was with them in the world, thanks, Jacob. I kept them in Thy name, those that Thou gavest me. I have kept, kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Uh, so, Jacob, uh, Jacob, we're going to read verse, uh, verse, verse 10, please. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest, priest servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. All right, go ahead, uh, Kathy. And uh, Bill. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. And led him away to Annas. Is that yes. how you pronounce it? That's right. First, for he was father in law to Caiaphas. I, I can't pronounce that word. That's, that's the hard. He's, he's even harder than the first one. Yeah, which was the high priest that same year. Now, Caiaphas, was he. Which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus unto the palace of the high priest. Okay. All right, so the. Um, As far as verse 9 is concerned, um, this, the saying this, the saying that was fulfilled, um, this, the saying that was fulfilled, uh, 
was of them which thou gavest me, I have lost none. Or from from verse twelve of the previous chapter the previous chapter. So But the son of perdition. But the, except with the exception of the son of perdition, with reference to uh, to Judas. And so um uh, Tammy, for verse uh, verse ten, what, uh, or um, Mrs. Grummer, rather, Mrs. Grummer, what is the name of the servant of the high priest? Marcus. Marcus. He's the one um, that had his uh, had his ear ear removed, and uh, he was there in the garden. So we see the, 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 the this was mentioned here. They're in the garden, and we see Peter. Uh, verse ten tells us he had he had a sword. He had a sword in his hand, and he took the sword, he drew it, and he smote the high priest's ear off. Now, Peter was probably a little bit sleepy. Uh, perhaps he was um, he was looking, perhaps to take his head off, but he took um, he took he took the ear of the high priest off. So, with um, can we look? Was that, there a reason for that? What was the reason? He was trying to, I suppose, have some type of defense. Oh, okay. It was defensive. He was having right, right. some type of young thinking. Yeah, you know, in his own mind, he was trying to yeah. have, have some type of some type of defense of of what was going on. These, these people are coming. I got you. Take right, the Lord okay. Jesus Christ captive. Yeah. Rather and, than obeying Christ and His commandments, he was listening to his own heart. And that caused him to, to cut off the ear of Malchus. And so the Lord Jesus Christ responded in verse 11. Um, he says, uh, put up thy sword. Uh, put up thy sword into thy sh the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? And, um, and so Jacob, a uh, question from, um, from verse, uh, verse 12 uh, for you. Uh, who who bound who bound the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the name of uh, um, Caiaphas's father-in-law. What is the name of Caiaphas's father-in-law? Now for verse for verse thirteen. Annas. Annas. That's right. Annas is the name. Of, um, of the of the father-in-law, and so and so the council. If we look from verse verse fourteen, if we look at verse fourteen. The council that the Caiaphas gave to the Jews said it was expedient uh, that one should die for the people. That was that was his that was the council that he gave. Um, and he wanted, he was trying to push the case to. To kill Jesus, um, but yet he, he didn't understand what he was saying, really. What he actually, I mean, which is which is true. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the vicarious atonement, he died in the place. He died for people. He died for Caiaphas. He died for Annas. He died for for all those people that were in the guard for Malchus. And for Barabbas. And for Barabbas. That's right. He, he died for all those. Yes. Well, why do you think uh, that was a custom that one person should die for the people? Shouldn't they die for their own? Like if he was a criminal, would he die for his crime? Well, he was. He was trying to. He was trying to emphasize the point, push the point of the fact that, that he wanted Jesus killed, and he was going to. He was going to do oh. whatever he whatever he could. Oh, he was making to, it up. Sorry. To, to accomplish, to accomplish um, that that point because that's what he was. He, he wanted to do. He was trying to stress that point, and so um, in verse 15, Bill. Uh, what disciple followed uh, the Lord Jesus Christ? Simon Peter. Simon Peter. He was the one that followed. There was also another one, but he was an unnamed one. Yes, and we we, we, we know that we'd be, he's unnamed, but we know it's John. By, by the context, we pick it up. It's John the Apostle. See, is Simon Peter the same thing as Peter? Yes. Okay. It's the same same about. person. Simon Peter and Peter are the same uh, the same person. And you see, go ahead. Oh, I don't want to interrupt you. No, you're not. Well, what I'm still on this, he should die for the people. Maybe there's a prophecy, probably a prophecy, mm -hmm. that someone would die for the sins of the world. 
And so that's what this high priest is pulling that out of the Bible, out of, the, out of his Torah or whatever. Well, he, he's, he's denying the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Right. He doesn't want right. to accept that fact. Right. Bill. Well, he's determined that Jesus should be the one that dies. But I think he's thinking there also uh, that Pilate is going to forgive mm -hmm. one person. Right. And that's what he's got in mind. He wants to make sure Jesus is not the one that's forgiven. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Jake. Do you know where the better explanation of that one verse is in Matthew? Because I think in Matthew. Matthew what? Matthew. Um, that's in Matthew. I don't, I don't have it right now, Jacob. Maybe you can do some more looking. Okay. Um, so the, the, um, and we see here in verse, verse 16, we see that Peter, we know that one, one, one apostle went in, um, but yeah, we have Peter standing outside by the gate in verse 18, rather verse 16. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out the other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So we have one, one apostle, who we, we know is John, by, 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 the, by, the, by the context. He's, yeah, he's sometimes the other disciple. He refers to himself as the other disciple. The disciple from Christ's law, the other disciple. Next, in the next chapter... In chapter 19, we'll see him again at the foot of the cross um, as far as being the other disciple of some sort. So this is John. Go ahead. Um, I vaguely remember something about John, uh, his mother, John Mark. You know, she this, and this he is, had uh, this nice house. This is, this is the Apostle John. Yeah, that's John. This John is the Mark. Apostle John. Do you, okay. you want to introduce no, no, John Mark not, and his I'm mother? No, I'm not saying that. If you, I don't mind talking about John Mark. No, can, no, no, no. But no, I don't, no, want, I don't want to confuse John Mark with the Apostle John. Well, I was getting confused. Okay, right. Who's John Mark? I got confused. I got confused. Yeah, because the reason I was saying that is because John Mark, <laughs> his mother had money, in the, and she knew the, knew the uh, priests and stuff. Uh, strike that from the record. I'm off. Okay, now to answer your question, Steve, um, John John Mark, uh, you familiar with the Gospel of Mark? No, uh, no. We have it's. I'm all well new to this. You understand? So, so I was. Uh, we have there's there's Matthew, there's Mark, there's Luke, and John. These are the four Gospels. And so we have the the Gospel the Gospel of Mark um, is written by John Mark. Now John now. In the book of Acts, we have a man introduced by the name of the Apostle Paul. Remember the Apostle Paul? Uh, the, the, the Apostle Paul was uh, was saved on, on the road. The, 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 the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul was saved on the road to Damascus, and he um, he went on he went on a, he went on a missionary he went on a missionary journey. He went on a missionary journey to. Um, Different places. We don't have the map up here, but all over, all, all, all over the Mediterranean basin, up this, this is, this is the, uh, this is the um, Jerusalem here, and so he went, he went uh, to different, different cities to establish churches to preach the gospel, and he went on three missionary journeys. On the first missionary journey, he took a man by the name of Barnabas, and a man by the name of of uh, John Mark. Uh, so that's um, and he answers that question. That's that's, that's that's who John Mark is. But let's not get this John Mark confused with the Apostle John. That's my See, point. sometimes and in the next chapter we're gonna have like three Marys that are mentioned. Wow. Um, wow. But they're not. They're not. They're, they're all different Marys. But there's there's three of them. Um, there's Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and Tammy. Oh, Mary the mother of Jesus. Okay. Uh, make, make an adjustment to the volume of the monitor, maybe. Maybe I brought it down too low. Three Marys. I don't know. 
There's a lot of bills around um, too. Yes, there are. Magdalene's there are. The same uh, Jacob, do you have do you have your volume on on your computer? Can you can you check that the check computer? your volume cross check the volume on computer for me, please? Mary uh, Magdalene. No. Mother of Jesus. Are, are you able to hear? Uh, no problem. Okay, you're hearing us. Okay, good. Is she listening to the phone? <laughs> she, well, are you listening to the phone? She's remembering to the computer. Okay, Kathy, are you listening by the phone or by the computer? Yeah, I don't have a computer. Okay, all right. Well, if you're listening to us by computer, please let us know that um, you can hear us. I guess I guess you can't hear us if you can't hear us. To call you. Call me. Uh, call me at 856-261-901. Oh, I'm sorry, 856 uh, 261. No, no, that's the wrong number. 856 869. Okay, just give me a call. You know what the phone number is. All right. Yes. Okay, the sound is just fine. Maybe our, our monitor, we have to, we're trying to, we want to have good sound, but not distorted sound. Uh, so, John Mark and the Apostle John are two different people. Now, so you, you, you have a, a general introduction to John, the, John Mark, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. Now, he's not necessarily related to this John. I'm sorry. This, he's, he's John the Apostle. He's well, John the Apostle. You brought it up. You know? right. And so, John, in this verse, we have, we have Peter stays there at the gate. Stays at the gate. But John, who are you? It's, the Bible says he, he, is, he knows people. Um, the other disciple, which was, was known unto the high priest, so he, he had some acquaintance with the high priest, he spake unto her that kept the door and brought Peter in. Brought Peter in. All right, Mrs. Garner, we're going to read verse 17, please. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer, thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? And, and sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also? One of his disciples, he denied it and said, I am not. All right, so we, we have here in, we have here a continuation. We have Peter, uh, John, the apostle, letting, talking to somebody to keep, the, talking to the lady that's keeping the gate, and he's coming in. Now, the damsel at the gate, at the door, says, to Peter, art thou also one of this man's disciples? And this is the first denial. He says, he said, he said, I am not. I am not. Now, we see uh, mommy verse uh, verse eight, uh, verse eighteen. But the question is, uh, why did the officers and the servants make a fire? Why did they make a fire? It was chilly, and they wanted to warm themselves. Okay. It was chilly. It was cold. It was cold. So they, they made a fire. Um, they made a fire because it was cold. Uh, not the point of the climate in Jerusalem is is probably similar to is similar at times star climate. Now they, they have their, their, the topography is different as far as they there's it's mountainous and so forth and so and they, they have their their preps. Um, I mean they are about the size they are about the size of New Jersey. Jerusalem, not Jerusalem, Israel. Israel is about the size of uh, 
on New Jersey. And so when we think when we think of it being cold, we don't want it's like to be cold. Because we live in a, we live in a place that, that's cold. So, I mean, it's not extremely cold, but it can get cold. Um, it's all coldness is a relative thing, but it's cold enough that we have to have heat. And see, this time they were cold. Not unusual for them to, for them to be cold. And so they made a fire. Uh, they lit a fire, and it says that he warmed himself. Uh, he warmed himself uh, there by uh, by the fire. Now they probably weren't far from the sea. Yeah, Jerusalem, I would suspect, is maybe um, 30, 30 to 40 miles uh, or so from well, the Mediterranean Sea. Is it like at, at there at that time? No, no, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was probably similar uh, in a certain way than, than, than it would be now, you know. Well, it was um, just probably a chilly night and they just need to keep warm. Yes, that's right. So they, they, they he warmed himself by, by the fire because it was cold. Now. Um, it's interesting in verse in verses um, 13 in verses 24 we have uh, the high priest is asking the Lord Jesus Christ about his disciples and about his doctrine. Now, what is doctrine? Doctrine is is teaching, is not doctrine is teaching. Doctrine is um, Principles. In principles. And so, you know, so in verse 19, the high priest asked Jesus of his, of his disciples and of his doctrine. In verse 13, um, we have a high priest again mentioned in verse 13, and the high priest is mentioned again in verse 24. Um, and so we have a high priest inquiring about doctrine. Now, how important how important is, is doctrine, would you say? Very important. Right. It's very important. It's very, very important. Um, it's very important. Um, Mrs. Grummer, question from uh, verse 20. Uh, to whom did the Lord Jesus Christ speak, and where did he speak? He spoke openly in the synagogue and in the temple. Okay, so he spoke openly. He spoke to the world, he says, openly in the temple, and, uh, and that's where he's speaking. Now the point being is that the the they were asking, they were inquiring about his doctrine, about his disciples' doctrine, and it should be very clear, it should be very clear to them what his doctrine was. That's why I brought up the point as far as he was speaking in the temple, he was speaking openly, and everybody knew what his beliefs were. And so the Lord Jesus Christ told them in verse verse 21. Ask them which heard me. That was his response, essentially. Ask them which heard me. Because he wanted them, he wanted them to understand the fact that they could have asked anybody that heard him speak, and they would have been able to tell him what he believed. They would have been able to tell him what they believed. And so, uh, Jacob, uh, who struck, who struck, or who smote the Lord Jesus Christ in the palm of his hand? In verse 22. Well, he one of the officers. You know, one of the officers. One of the officers. And so, I guess the officer was, he was getting upset. He was becoming troubled as far as um, what was happening, how the uh, Lord Jesus Christ was responding to the, these questions. But there was, there was, the officer was completely out of line. He didn't need to strike him with his hand. Um, he didn't need to do that at all. And so the Lord Jesus Christ responds, um, he says in verse 23, Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why smitest thou me? Him. Well, it just goes to the fallacy of, of I mean, he, they thought that the Lord Jesus Christ was just an ordinary man. And I mean, the whole, whole idea that the high priest was supposed to be respected and you were supposed to speak to him with respect they didn't realize the authority that he truly had the lord jesus christ right. himself mm -hmm. and and so really they needed to be deferring to him but they didn't recognize him for who he was so they were the ones that were actually out of line yes but it's, they were it's, it's just sort of interesting in light of the you know i mean it's it seemed like it was a 
They thought he was being disrespectful mm -hmm. or something. But yet, like you, said, like you mentioned, his authority was much higher than their authority. You know, he, he was he was the one. He sees God in God in flesh. Um, but yeah, they, they were they were they were inside out, upside down, and backwards. These people. Um, and so we have in verse in verse 24 we have the high priest. We have Annas. Senus sending the Lord Jesus Christ to the high priest Caiaphas. And see, they, they were related to each other, and um, but yet they, they were. And so we have this this trial. They're trying, they're trying to push something, trying to push something that should not be pushed. Now this is all in God's providence and kind of God's sovereign direction. But but they they well, they're trying the the hardest they can. To get Jesus put to death. And so, Kathy, a question from verse 25. Uh, who denied being one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? What? Uh, from verse 25, who denied being one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Simon Peter. Simon Peter, that's right. Simon Peter, he is the one. He is the one that denied uh, being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what Christ told him. You know, he, said, he, said, he said this. Uh, Peter said, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but Christ knew that he would, and he told him that. And so, um, a, a question that was asked in verse 26. Uh, a servant of the high priest being his kinsman, in other words, uh, his kinsman, his, he was here, Peter cut off, said, did I see thee in the garden with him? So we have here somebody who's a kinsman, a relative of the of market of, of Malchus, that was there in the garden and witnessed the fact that his ear was cut off. Now, um, kinsman is a relative? Kinsman is a relative, that's correct. A kinsman is a relative. And, and in, the, in the parallel passage, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ picked the ear up and, um, and put, it, put it back on. Uh, the, the side of the head of Malchus. But we have here this, this witness. Uh, this is, I was there in the garden, and you look like the guy that was holding that sword that cut my near kinsman's ear off. And so um, Peter is um, uh, was, was confronted with, with that fact. With that fact. Uh, Bill, as far as um, a question from verse 27, I guess so we've read, we read, we read 27, you have we? No, not yet. And so let's, um, this is. Um, Mrs. Grammer, go ahead and um, read um, verses 26, please. Start with verse 26. <clears throat> One of the servants of the high priest, me and his kinsman, who cut here, Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied him again, and they did to cut crude. And then they did to cut crude. And then they did to Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell thee of me? And so, Bill, um, getting back to that, that question I was asking before, um, uh, what happened right before the cock crew? In verse 27. <clears throat> um, Peter was asked if he was a disciple. Peter then denied again, 
and immediately the cock crew. That's right. He was asked again. So this is the third time, uh, kind of confronted by all sorts of, uh, all, you know, all, all sorts of all, all angles, and yet he denies again. This is the third time. What's that mean, rooster crew? Uh, you know, when you think of cock and doodle doo, you know, if you're in the country, if you have roosters, okay. that's what it means. It, uh, like when early in the morning time, usually, or when it gets dark, I suppose, um, you've, you've, you've heard the rooster, I guess, um, cock and doodle doo, I'm going to show the rooster. Yeah, through yeah. The rooster crowing. <laughs> oh, rooster crowing. Okay. Yeah, well, when you say crow plural, then it's crow. Okay, past tense. Oh, past tense, okay. Yeah. So past tense. So that's what it means. Okay. Yeah. So that, that so, so the, the the tense was confusing you know, But you know you know what it means, right? The rooster. Um, so uh, here here Peter denied him, and then the rooster crew. Uh, and so he was. Um, now something that's interesting here in verse 28, um, we have the accusers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're, on the one hand, they're, they're, they're doing this deceptive thing in trying to kill Christ, yet they want to keep themselves from being defiled. Um, in verse, in verse 28, they don't want to defile themselves. Um, they, they, they led Jesus um, from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment. And it's early, you see. So they went out of the hall of judgment. It was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. That they might eat the Passover. So they didn't want to go into the judgment hall pilot. So in other words, they came up to the door or stood out of the sidewalk, right there, we'll call it the pavement. They stood out there on the, on the pavement outside the building where Pilate was. And so they stay way there outside. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ went inside. And the reason they didn't want to go inside was because they, they said they didn't want to defile themselves because Passover was coming later on in that week. Passover was coming within. Four days or so. Within four days. I hear that mentioned a lot uh, in, in all the verses, mm -hmm. in the books. Yes. Passover. I mean, was Passover every other week or? Passover was once a year. But every since I've been going here, I've been hearing that word Passover just about every chapter. Every, so we're, we're in that every book. Every book. Yeah. Every book. We're, we just, we just, that's where we're studying right now. It did ha It happened once a year. Now, what Passover was was a, 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 a recollection. Of, was a, was a memory of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ delivered the Jews out of captivity, out of bondage in Egypt. You remember the ten? You know about the ten plagues, don't you? Remember those? The Jews were in captivity. No, no, no. For you ever see the movie, The Ten Commandments? Oh, Ten Commandments, yeah. Ten plates. Yeah, yeah that's right. For 430 the years. The commandments. Uh, Pardon me? The Ten Plagues aren't the commandments. What was my question? Well, he, what were the Ten Plates you said? He, the ten, then he united it with the Ten Plates. Okay, you know, there's a distinction between, between John and John Mark. There's a distinction between the Ten Plagues and the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments are in, in Exodus 20, recorded in Exodus 20. The ten plays are recorded earlier in the book of Exodus, chapters 3, 4, and 5, perhaps. I apologize, Bob. Some yeah. of the class. No, no, it's no, you're not. You're not something to ask. You have to know because it deals, it deals with Passover. It deals no, no, with Passover. I'm, I'm slowing it down a little no. bit because there's a lot of things I don't know. It's, you're not slowing it down. We like Steve, it. Steve, you're, you're not slowing it down. You have to ask Tammy had a comment, did you? Hey, I was going to say, in the book of John, there's at least three times that three, three different Passovers that are mentioned because. Christ's ministry was for three years, and okay, there's several. That so, so that's why you may have seen it before. Yeah, that's why it could I, I could understand the, year. I hear the word Passover mm -hmm. all the time. And there might be a time even before right. his ministry started that is mm -hmm. mentioned. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, so like in the Book of Acts, you know, there are other Passovers that are mentioned in the Book of Acts as well. What we're studying on, on Thursdays, and so Pass Passover is a time of memorial. Think of think of July 4th for us mm -hmm. here in America. I mean, July 4th, at least at one point in time, is a very special time. Independence Day. You know, the, going back when it, was, when it was 50 years away from Independence Day, I mean, it was a, it was a, big, it was a big event. I mean, it still, it still should be a big event for us today, thinking how we got independence. The farther we get away from the Independence Day, you know, 1776, the day we, we declared the independence, not the day we gained independence, uh, when the... When the, when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, that, that's what 
it's, it's, it's much more important than Independence Day. They gained independence. But it was a sovereign act of God. God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand. They were, they were, they were 400, 400 years, so that's their independence. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's their, they're, they're celebrating the Passover. There's certain rules, regulations. So they look back and remember what God has done or done them, And it's called Passover because the angel of death came through the, the country of Egypt. And he would pass over any house that had blood upon the doorpost, the, the side post and the top post. They would pass over any, any, any door in Egypt that had not blood on the doorpost and the top, the lintel, the top part, the side post and the top post. God, the angel of death, would come in and slay the firstborn of both man and beast in that household. And so it was, it was a tremendous blessing that God delivered them. You see, yeah. And you see, the, the Lord Jesus Christ was, this is the only pastor, and he, he's coming. He's, he's being tried right on the, on the heels of Passover, right, on, right, on the, right when the celebration is about to begin. He's being tried and, and executed in the, in the, in the, just prior to Passover beginning. He is the Passover lamb. Passover, by the way, anyone that has the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon him, the angel of death will, not, will, will, will pass over. But anyone that does, does not trust the Christ as Savior, they're, they're going to be accountable for their own sin, and then they will, they will, be, they will die. They, they continue to reject Christ until the day of their death. When they die, they'll be, they will, they'll be in, a, in a place for eternity in hell. But they accept Christ as Savior when they're, when they're in heaven. And so this, they're celebrating Passover. Jewish feasts, the Jews celebrate this today. They celebrate the city, the Passover. And so that's what, it's, it's a, like an Independence Day for them. Much stronger than Independence. More, more significant. Much more spiritual meaning than Independence. That, yeah. That's why it's so interesting the way you're, you teach the Bible. You mm -hmm. go by chapter, by right. chapter, verse, mm -hmm. by verse. Yeah, that's right. That's how you have to do it. I like, I'm, learning, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I've been here two months now. A that's month and a half. That's great. You're doing great. That's great. You're doing fine. And you don't think you're still in the class now, Master? Yeah, question. I had to ask questions. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. some of these things. Right. Yes, Paul. I mean, yes, uh, Jacob. Uh, for this chapter 28, it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall. They stationed to be five. Yes. I remember. this man? Who asked that question? Pilate. Pilate. Pilate asked that question. He's, again, remember that they are, they are in two different places. We have Pilate's inside the judgment hall and the, the, the officers and the Pharisees and the high priests are out on the, the front, on the sidewalk, out on the pavement they are. Let's go and see. Don't laugh at me, but who oh. was Pilate? Pilate was the governor. He, he, was, he was the governor that was appointed by Caesar. He was, we had, it was, okay. a, he was, he was the governor of, of the territory. Was he Jewish or, or Roman? Was Roman. 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 And so, <clears throat> pardon me? Nothing, I'm just whispering, I'm not. Okay. Nothing to do with you. All right, so we can make an adjustment if you want to. You can turn that on if you want to. It's not on there? No, it's not on. It's, 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 it's a sound problem. But go ahead and turn it on. We'll see, we'll see if it... Oh, I don't turn, know. Turn it on. Please turn it on. Please turn it on. Last week, it was very distorted on yeah. the recording. No, oh, I don't have to. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Good. I'm used to being hot. All right, so, um, and so we have here an answer uh, that, that is given by those that are out there on the on the pavement, out there, out there in front of the, the building, the judgment hall. Um, 
uh, in verse 30, he says, If he were not a malefactor, we would have not delivered him unto thee. And so they're not only answering uh, the question. So, you know, he says, uh, What accusations do you bring against them? And then they say, Well, if he, if he didn't do anything wrong, we wouldn't be bringing him to you. So he's not really giving them an answer. They, they fail to answer uh, Pilate's question. And so, um, so uh, oh wait, oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering about that. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me say, if, okay, if you were not a malefactor, you would not have delivered him up until the you think he was, or they were being deliberately evasive because they were, yes, they were, they were, they knew they were doing wrong, though, though they must have kind of they had a prick in their heart, or they knew they, they knew first of all they couldn't give an exact accusation. Mm -hmm. So they knew they were in the wrong right? because mm -hmm. of that. And I don't know for a minute there if they were feeling a conscience, but then again, mm -hmm. it doesn't really, you know, depict their feeling a conscience or not. They're just saying what they're saying to, you know, um, just have whatever's going to be done be done. Yes. Them. They just want to move their hands. They yeah, that, that's, what they're, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're, uh, what they're doing. And so in verse, in verse 31, they, they say, um, Then Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and judging him according to your law. And the response to the Jews was, the Jews therefore said, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Um, but that is under the, under the, under the guidance of, of Rome. They, they, it wasn't lawful for them to put them to death. Because that's what they're, what they're saying. But later on in the passage, we see something, either in this path chapter or the next chapter, um, I think it was in, in the next chapter, we'll see something that's different than that. But, but nonetheless, they're saying, we can't put anybody to death. We can't put any to, in, in, to death. And so, um, um, they couldn't stone people. Well, they're, they're claiming they could, but well, they're, I'm saying they're saying this to Pilate. Yeah. They're saying this to Pilate. I mean, granted, yeah, we, we have we have this. They're taking up stuff. We, we have they're, they're they're contradicting themselves. Right. Time and time again. No surprise. No surprise there. But, in, but the question I have for you from verse 32, Mom, is um, who? Uh, Whose saying was fulfilled uh, in John 18:22? Oh, the saying of Jesus. 18:32. I'm sorry. The saying the, of Jesus. The saying of Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we have Pilate in verse 23 asking the Lord Jesus Christ, "Art thou the King of the Jews?" He's asking him. He's asking this uh, this question. And um, and Joe from verse 34. Who responded, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Because he, he wants to understand what, what Paul or Pilate is getting his information from. He, he knows. He's a mission. And the fact is, Pilate's being, he's being played by the officers, by the chief priests, by the Jewish people that want to see uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, put, put to death. And so... Well, that's why, you know, he um, said it. that's why the question, but that's why the question was asked. So, Mrs. Grommer, go ahead and read verse 35, please. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he, he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But he had a custom that I should release unto you one at Passover. Will he therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. All right, so we have Pilate interacting with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, you know, in verse, in verse 35, you know, um, 
when our nation, um, he said, of our nation, the chief priest has delivered thee unto me. And so, um, Mrs. Grommer, uh, why did the Lord Jesus Christ say that his kingdom was not? He said his kingdom was not of this world. And so, and we have here, uh, we have um, Paul asking him a question, art thou a king then? Jesus answered him and said, Thou sayest I am a king, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. And so he's come to do the world to bear witness of the truth. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. And so, Jacob, what's the answer? I like that. Uh, what is truth? That's the, this is from verse, uh, verse 38. And so, now Pilate is reminding them of a custom. He says here in verse 39, yeah, ye have a custom. He says, he says, ye have a custom. He's talking to them. He said, now again, he's, he's coming in and out of the house, in and out of the judgment hall. Because the Jewish, we need the Jews that are accusing the Lord Jesus Christ, won't come in because they don't want to be defiled. So, several times, he's coming in and out of the, the hall. He's coming out, he's going out to the pavement, he's coming back, back to the side, in the back of the saw, coming back and out. So he goes back, he goes out again, and tells them he had a custom. Joe. Yeah, um, I just want to go back real quick to verse 38. Okay. And Paul said unto him, what is truth? Uh, and when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said, unto them I find in him no fault at all. And Albert and I were discussing this whole chapter last night. He was a... Uh, doing homework with me, which sure. we were discussing mm -hmm. the whole thing. And um, back and forth, which is very good. But, yes. you know, verse 37, he was, you know, telling him, you know, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth, everyone that is of the truth. Here's my voice, and then that prompted Pilate to say, what is truth, and then et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And he said, I find it in no fault. At, at all, I said, Albert, I mean, even though the Lord knows what's going to become of him, he knows he's going to die, you know, at the Romans' hands and all, mm -hmm. um, and knows that Paul's going to turn them over to the Romans and all this other stuff, it sounds as if, you know, well, the fact that he's saying, I should be a witness unto the truth, everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice, when Paul is saying to him, what is truth, sounds like Jesus, for a minute there, is, is you know, witnessing to Pilate, even though he knows what's about to occur. Mm -hmm. Pilate turning him over, etc., right. etc. That's right. And, you know, to make Pilate at least say, what is truth, mm -hmm. even momentarily. And then, right. as a result, say, I find in him no fault at all, because he realized that perhaps, okay, he was sharing the truth about him that he didn't know until now. You know, before he actually released him to the Romans and all. Right. Before he was pressured to release him to the Romans, that is. Mm -hmm. That's good. And so, good observation, Joel. You now have made a good, good point there. And when Pilate, let's see, the thing about this is, Pilate asked this question, what is truth? But he never waited for an answer. He, he never waited for an answer. He waited. He had to go back out of the, out of the building, go out of the other side, walk down the street, out to the pavement, and talk to them. And he said, and when he went out there, he said, I find no fault in him. Clearly, time and time again. Pilate found no fault, uh, no fault in him. And then he reminds them of a custom. He says, ye have a custom. Ye have a custom that I should release unto you one that I wanted to pass over. There's a word Passover again, Steve. It's the same time, same Passover. I wanted to pass over. Uh, will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? He's asking this question. Because he, well, he wants, he horribly believes that Lord Jesus Christ should be released. And he's trying to give them a, a, a way by which he can be released with, to, save, to save their face. But yet, what the response is, you know, uh, what, was the, what was the response uh, that they had, Kathy? I mean, who, who is, who's Barabbas anyway, Kathy? What? He's a robber, that's right. Barabbas was a robber. Um, he says, not this man, in verse 40, not this man, but Barabbas. So they, they chose Barabbas to be released over the Lord Jesus Christ because they wanted, they, they, they hated what the Lord Jesus Christ, who he was. They wanted to reject what he, what, who he was and what he stood for. 
And so that's why they didn't want him to be released. The answer was, again, I'm sorry. Uh, Barabbas was a robber. The answer to the question for you, mm -hmm. he was a robber. Um, a murderer, an insurrectionist, and in other, in other passages it talks about parallel passages. Yeah, I thought he was a murderer. Yes. Me too. Just, yeah, that's true. But, but different parallel passages, you know. Um, different parallel passages. Now, uh, Mrs. Grommer, what's something that, that you noticed uh, here in John chapter 18? Something that your favorite verse or a favorite yeah. event took place? chapter mm -hmm. about people Christ was trying to explain uh, tell everybody who he was yes that's right that's right so the, the Jews whoever was asking this question the Jews or us, I don't know who it was but the pilot whoever it was Jesus admitted who whom he was mm -hmm. who he that's was what I'm saying, yeah. but here they said to Peter I thought one of his disciples, and he lied and said, I am not. Mm -hmm. So he, he denied who, who he was. Yes, that's right, he did. And Jesus spoke boldly who he was. Why did Peter do that? He was scared of the crowd. He was scared of people. He was scared. He was, he was fearful. 
Yeah, because uh, he was. Then eventually uh, not uh, come back. Uh, he turned against him. Then he, then he believed. Yeah, that's that's right. He, he Peter he, Peter came around. You know, he did he did he, he did was repentant. He went went up his sorrow. He was very he was very remorseful what he did. And uh, in my mind, mindful, the of uh, the eleven, only two of the eleven we know were there. So. John was there, Peter was there, mm -hmm. but but the nine other people, nine other, nine other apostles or the apostles, I mean, like Judas did betray them, but the nine other, nine, other, nine other apostles they weren't there at all. So Peter at least got close, but then he got fearful, but yet he repented with sorrow, mm -hmm. and Lord Jesus he was forgiven. Lord Jesus Christ forgave him, you know, and then we see Peter is mentioned in the Book of Acts. First, first part of the book of Acts, Peter, God, God used Peter miraculously to, to, to we reach the Jews. And then we, we have the, 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 the vision with Cornelius, and he's got an opportunity to go to the Gentiles. Okay. Why weren't the other disciples there? I don't know. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep will, will scatter. The fulfillment of prophecy. What was that? Smite the shepherd. Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, Zechariah 13.7. Zechariah 13.7. Zechariah 13. Where is that? Uh, Zechariah is an Old Testament passage, um, right, right before uh, Malachi. So it's two books before Matthew. Okay. And Matthew's uh, three books before John. It was 13 7? Uh, there's uh, 27, I think. Let's look at that real quick. Malachi. After Daniel 14. No, no, before, after Malachi. Oh, after Malachi? No, 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 I'm sorry, before no, Malachi. Malachi's last book. Yeah, before Malachi. Malachi. One, one book before Malachi. Okay. That's Jonah. It's page 12.50. 12.50? 12.50. 12.50. Verse 7. Of uh, what chapter? Uh, 13, uh, Zechariah 13, 7. Oh, I got chapter 4. Are you in Malachi? You're in page. Uh, Are you using it? I got, I got it already. One of the church's Bibles. Yes, yes. yes. No, uh, the page number it might be different in that one. It should be the same. It's 1250. 1250, that's what I have. Is it where? 12, page 1250. 1250. Zachariah. Zachariah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And we'll chapter 13 and verse 7. Want to read that loud? Go ahead, you can read it. Okay, read it. Uh, awake. O sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. So that's, that's talking about the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, the shepherd, and you smite the shepherd, and at least at that time the sheep were scattering, scattered. So that's why they, why they left. And that also more explains uh, 18. 1880. Yeah, the last part of uh, John 1880. Okay. That's good. You see, let these go their way. Yes, that's right. And uh, okay, so some thoughts. So who has that opportunity? Did you talk first, Steve? Is that something? I said too many things. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, Papa, mind you, you're, 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 okay, Joe. Okay, your turn, Joe. Um. Yeah, Albert and I were talking about Isaiah chapter 53 last night. Yes. It was reminding us of that. And, you know, cite a few verses, chapter 53, yes. verses 3 and 4, with this chapter 18 here, telling mm -hmm. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and are acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him, who is despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 
smitten. There's a word smitten again, like in Zechariah. <laughs> 18, I guess. I mean, any of us who weren't saved, we lived back then, I mean, we were a Jew and all, we would be against Jesus. You go according to the law. Right. Mm -hmm. Go according to what, what holiness and truth that the Lord stood yes. for. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Tim, how about you? Something you thought to have? I don't know, I just like the verse 38. Uh, Pilot asks an excellent question. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of people that ask that, that question, yeah. but there's a lot of them are like mm -hmm. Pilot. And they, right. don't, they don't wait for the mm -hmm. answer. And then, That's right. Um, you know, it's just, um, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a wonderful question. Right, excellent and question. It was, it was he, what people need to ask. And yet he didn't wait for the answer, did he not? No, he didn't. This is why you need a class, because it, 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 you can read the Bible upside down and not understand it. Yeah, that's right. So many people just don't understand it. That's right, that's right, people don't. You're right. Any more thoughts or uh, comments about anything about chapter, uh, this, this chapter, uh, chapter 18? Next week we'll do chapter 19 or 1. But, um, is, that the, is that the one with the three Marys in it? Yes, it is. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> I'm going to be raising my hand right. left and right over here. Okay. <laughs> three three Marys, Marys now. now. Three Marys. All right, go to Jesus Kerbal. Is, is that? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, the teachings, uh, especially the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who knew everything that was going to happen to him. He accepted it and... He took on the, uh, the punishment of all of us knowingly that it was probably the most horrific thing that, uh, that could be withstood, uh, but he did it willfully, and uh, we thank him. Thank you for, uh, for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Is that where the expression comes, not to be born?